Salvage, a story by user Rantarian. Chapter 16, Help. Jennifer Delaney had to admit the defenses that the crew of the Zodderso had built were impressively dangerous, although the robots that shot pipe bombs had a tendency to crawl around in a creepy manner, turning and refocusing its camera on anyone walking by. Its appearance was almost spider-like, and she never liked spiders much, or any bug for that matter, except for ladybirds, and maybe butterflies. She liked those. How does it know what to shoot at? She'd ask when Adrian had explained the basic premise of the killing machine. It won't start shooting at me now, will it? As I understand it, it's able to tell who the bad guys are, but just to be safe, I'll register you. We wouldn't want to have rescued you from starvation only to have you blown to bits, would we? Jennifer frowned, furrowing her brows slightly. She'd known soldiers in Ireland, but the only other people she'd known who spoke so casually of weapons and killing were gamers, and none of that was even close to real. She wondered if Adrian had some form of PTSD. It didn't seem unlikely given his experiences, but she felt it would be a bit difficult to ask. How did you ask that sort of thing anyway? Hi, you seem like a bit of a psycho, but are you suffering from any post-traumatic stress disorders? She doubted that would be well received. So, she said, more conversationally in order to change the subject. How did you end up getting abducted? On base? On the battlefield? Camping, he said, although he seemed displeased by the question. It was while I was camping. In the bush. Oh, she replied, a little disheartened by the limited response. For me, it was outside this pub my dad runs. It's a family business. Been in the family for generations. I think my great-grandfather got it off a man who owed him money. Anyway, I was waiting for some friends to come by and pick me up. We were going to go on one of those old film nights at the cinema. Stars of the Silver Screen was its name. I think that night was supposed to be Audrey Hepburn. She paused for a moment, considering what she'd just said. I wonder if they thought I ditched them. Maybe at first, he said after an uncomfortable moment. Later, probably not. So which Audrey Hepburn movie? Two months ago. Beckmer had cooperated in the end, seeming as pleased as he could be about the time outside of his little cage. Together, they'd ventured outside of the Zodersil, working by the light of Afrag's reflective glow. The ship is automatically deactivating the relays, Beckmer had determined after repeatedly testing a range of them. It's the system protecting itself. You will need to terminate them correctly before you can have any expectation of functionality. Adrian surveyed the mess of the wreckage. There's gotta be a million of the fucking things need doing. Likely only in excess of 40,000, Beckmer said, more than a little smugly. So you should be done in mere months, if you work at it. We've already been here for nearly four months, fuckwit, Adrian replied sharply. How long before the Hunters come back? How many do you reckon will be coming next time? Beckmer was contemplatively silent. If you trace back the larger conduits, there will be maybe a tenth of the number. Terminate those. It will be much quicker. Four thousand, then, Adrian said looking over the cavernous space with a heavy sense of resignation. There'll still be a fuck ton of work. Zodersil, present day. It had been three days since Jen had arrived on the ship, and Adrian had spent most of the time trying to get her properly acquainted with where things were and how things were done. For the first time in a long time, Adrian felt some gratitude towards the Cortai for seeing fit to install a translator unit in his own head. It was damned inconvenient for Jen to interact with the Zodersil's computer system without one, and she had to guess at every response it gave. For the first time ever, Adrian wished that Beckmer was still around. The bald little alien had been a total fucking asshole, but he'd have been able to install any of the devices that Adrian had recovered from the Cortai corpses that had remained aboard the Endless Sequence, given the right impetus. Add to the fact that she had most likely taken out the entire crew of the Blue Encounter, and she was in desperate need of the inoculation that had kept him from killing everyone on the Zodersil. Until that happened, he couldn't afford to let any non-human onto the ship, not even an enemy, in case the illnesses that every human carried with them managed to escape into a major population. The galaxy didn't need another reason to find humanity terrifying. This, he explained to her, sitting in front of the console on the endless sequence, is the detection array. This is a Cortai scout ship, so it's got better senses than most. I had a guy I knew set this up a while back so it was translating in English. Speaks in English, too, if you set it to vocal interaction. It's always pushing the information through to the Zodacil, so we'll be told whenever it picks up something weird. So this is how we avoid nasty surprises? Jen asked, looking over the console. It is in English. That's a sight for sore eyes, let me tell you that. He smiled at her. It must have been a long time since she'd been able to simply read anything. In a society of hyper-advanced technology, 
she wouldn't have even been able to find pen and paper to write anything for herself. Is it possible to set up the Zardasil computer to use English as well? She asked. Maybe so it doesn't sing in that awful voice? He gave a short chuckle. I asked that same guy whether it was possible, but the computer systems are too different. I guess you'd know more about that sort of thing than me, being in IT. Yeah, she said, disappointed. You'd at least need some sort of conversion software, but I wouldn't know where to begin. Look, he said, I used to be a sort of engineer. In the end, that didn't help me all that much. But I knew the general rules, and that helped. Some stuff. Well, the laws of physics don't change just because we're in space. I'm not sure that that idea can be applied to software, she replied. A completely different computer system will use a completely different language. There may be some similarities, or there might not. It doesn't help me any that I have no idea how any of this technology works. Well then, he said, passing her a tablet device. Well, I scan for Cortai vessels. You start reading this? What is it? She asked, taking the device and playing with the buttons. That, he said, will let you access the help interface. I need you to learn these systems. One month ago, Beckmer was sitting on the uncomfortable bed that was bolted to the wall, the only item of furniture in his cell, unless you counted the bucket that the human had given him to relieve himself in. It was a disgusting receptacle, one the human rarely cleaned properly, when it was cleaned at all. At first, he had suspected that the human had left it there as a form of passive torture, and, a display and had displayed his feelings on the matter by hurling its contents over the wall. The human had been disgusted and extremely displeased much to Beckmer's own enjoyment, until he had simply returned the emptied bucket to Beckmer and left the mess as it was. It had remained that way for five miserable days until the human finally washed it down. Beckmer no longer believed the bucket was any kind of torture, but merely a task that the human had no desire to deal with, and therefore performed it in the most expedient way possible. Beckmer had not made another mess. He hadn't seen the point. There had also been the excursions the human had allowed him to go on. As much as he despised the human, he had come to despise his boredom more. He was a Cortai, a brilliantly intelligent being of a proud people, and he did not belong in a cage. He could not endure in a cage with nothing to do, nothing to see, nothing further to think about. At first, he had insulted the human as a point of defiance. But now, now it was merely a ritual they both performed before Beckmer acquiesced. They both knew it, and Beckmer hated the human even more for knowing. But he still played the game. The Hunter ships are connected, the human had explained in the most recent of his infrequent business visits. The relays are all active after being properly terminated. A thankless fucking job that was, by the way. I think we might be ready to fire them up. Then fire them up, Beckmer replied. That was not a question. Last time I tried that, I almost set fire to the fucking flight deck, the human said. I'd much prefer if you were out there making sure we avoid another inferno. I know this may disappoint you, human, Beckmer replied dryly, but I am not a firefighter. I wouldn't be surprised if you burned like a twig, the human returned. I just need you to monitor the output and shut the fucking thing down if it looks like it's going to burn down. And what will you be doing? Beckmer asked acidly, while I have all the fun. I'll be doing anything else, the human replied, like keeping the navigation set and firing the FTL. What is wrong with the navigation system? Beckmer asked. The human grunted, a wonderful reminder of his savagery. It hasn't updated in 65 million years. It tries to contact the fucking database about seconds after booting up, fails, and then reboots. You're entering coordinates directly? Beckmer asked, unable to contain his concern. Absolute or relative? Relative, the human replied. It's not easy to do, but I've spent about 12 fucking hours practicing. That is exceedingly optimistic, human, Beckmer replied. There are two possible ways that this plan gets us killed. First, if the FTL system gets corrupt data, we could end up anywhere, in anything. Second, if the warp tunnel requires live data, it may collapse when it gets corrupt data. I'm gonna say that's bad, the human said. How bad? Depending on how it collapses, we could be disintegrated, dumped out in fragments, or just dropped somewhere else, Beckmer explained. There's no way you'll be able to do this with a broken navigational unit, and I'm not letting you kill me in the crazy attempt. Then what the fuck do you suggest? The human asked irritably. I can't make the system work when it keeps rebooting. Beckmer blinked, shaking his head. The human was so stupid to keep trying to make the unworkable work when there was such a better option so obviously available. Take me aboard the endless sequence, and I'll patch the data through to the Zadarsil, he said impatiently. It won't be seamless, but it shouldn't kill us either. Are you sure you can do it? The human asked, clearly not understanding who he was dealing with. 
Of course, a primitive beast from a backwater planet could hardly be expected to comprehend the abilities of those who graduated from the Cortai Academies, as it would naturally have nothing with which to compare. It should only take me a few hours, Beckmer replied curtly. Although he was aware that it would take significantly less than this, he always made a habit of under-promising and over-delivering, and this habit did not fail to extend to the various trite tasks the human put to him. Do not doubt my skill, human. It would be a very long time before Beckmer realized that he had just been played. Sesevert Research Station, two weeks ago. There had been hardly any real work done in the time since Tricror had returned to the Dominion. Instead, she had been debriefed, then debriefed a second time, and then a third. For a full week, it had seemed that all anybody wanted her to do was talk about her experiences aboard the Zadersil. That, and tell them where it was. She was not unaware of their interest in the technology that had built the ship, especially in light of revelations that had been built by ancient sapients of the same death world that now belonged to the humans. But she had thus far resisted telling them all of the details. This had been something that the three of them, being Cheers, Rypob, and herself, had predicted, and had discussed as they made their return journey under cloak in a reclaimed hunter vessel. And they had all agreed that their story would include a ship with functional FTL, rather than the useless husk they had abandoned. Abandoned, along with Adrian. Tricror still felt pangs of guilt over that, as raw and fresh as the day they had left as he slept. They had left him a recording, explaining their reasoning, explaining that his erratic behavior had been too concerning to risk angering him in a discussion over what they were planning. He had not been willing to give up, even when all evidence had pointed to a dying vessel. No, that wasn't right. A dead vessel with delusions of survival, and that nothing could be done by a mere handful of individuals to fix it. Still, it hadn't been as though they'd simply doomed him to stay there, had it? They'd only taken one hunter vessel between them, in spite of their preference to avoid them altogether where possible. They'd been guilty enough to have left him with everything, and Tricro wondered if the others also predicted that the human would remain there until forced to leave. She knew he was stubborn enough, but she thought the main problem was hope. Every successful bit of work aboard the Zadersil had dangled hope in front of them, hope to restore the ship, and hope to use it to take the fight to the hunters. It had taken the flight deck fire to destroy the hope in the rest of them, but it hadn't been enough for Adrian. Hope was his poison. She sighed. She had never used to think this way. Before being abducted by the Cortai and meeting Adrian, she had been a capable weapons designer for the Dominion, focused on finding ways to refine and advance current technology. Upon her return, she had started to turn the ideas she had discussed with Adrian into living reality, only to be pulled from the design team for psychological review. They had suspected her time spent with the human and his beautiful, evil mind had corrupted her way of thinking. Why else build weapons that could kill so indiscriminately? It could be true, however. Tricror had once been a naive worker following the status quo. The Ruerher that had returned had wanted to fuck shit up. She was beginning to suspect that the two were even more distinct, and that the latter lacked the home to return to. Everybody had noticed the change, and they were now past the time of tolerance, and to the stage of trying to get her medical assistance. Even her two husbands had overstepped their bounds and tried to have her assessed. And so Tricor found herself living a life where nobody understood her. In the quiet moments, she found that she had even started to miss the Zadersil, at least as it was after the Cortai had been dealt with, and the ship had considered Adrian to be its new master. There hadn't been any bureaucracy getting in the way of what she enjoyed doing there, and no psychological examinations to keep her deteriorated mental state in check. So that was why, when Cheer's call had come through... She'd hurried to connect the link. Cheer, she greeted him cheerily. It is good to see you again. And you, he replied. How is life after the Zadersil treating you? She hesitated, long enough that he must have noticed. They are treating me for a deteriorated mental state. I do not believe that there is anything wrong, however. They're doing the same to me, Cheer replied, and it seems I was absent for longer than I had thought. My world is now part of the Dominion and they have only just released me from questioning. Have you heard anything about the situation with the Cortai Directorate? She asked. Last I heard, they had disavowed any connection to Beckmer and Triatha's actions. The situation hasn't changed, Cheer replied dourly. The Dominion appear disinclined to push the matter, especially with their attention on the Kelsey. There is no continuing investigation. Tricror bared her teeth angrily. Those, those fuckers, she spat. They didn't tell me that. They didn't tell me that either, Cheer said, anger clearly evident in his eyes. I got it from a friend with higher connections. I got something else as well. The Dominion is gearing up to go looking for the Zodersil.
All right, guys, that's going to end this one for today. Uh, we have more coming tomorrow. I'm sorry I missed one yesterday. I had an interview and I had to drive all the way into uh, the city. It's an hour and 45 minutes. I plan to move back home and that's you know, where we are going, but man, it is such a long drive and I had to do it again today, but that was just because my, my friend, when I was down there, I hung out with him for a bit and he forgot his phone in my car. So I had to drive all the way back and drop his phone off to him. But anywho, um, we got more coming tomorrow. I may be able to get another one out today. I doubt it, but you know, don't, don't hold your breath or anything like that, guys. Uh, especially if you are going to be in the vacuum of space and don't bring it, breathe out of a bag. I think we've we've discussed this before. But regardless, <laughs> thank you so much for being here, guys. As always, I really appreciate it. If you'd like to uh, help continue the channel's growth, please click on the link in my description for my Patreon. Every little bit helps, and I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, and uh, if you liked it, hit like. If you're new here, hit subscribe so that you can get updated when I post new videos. Uh, we're going to continue into the weekend this week just because I didn't get as many videos done this week. So you're going to get some more this weekend. There's not going to be a break that way. Um, but, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate you as always, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Ah, wait, P.S. I forgot. I actually had, I have an interesting idea. Um, I don't know how everybody would feel about this. So here's the idea. Um, I don't know if anybody out there is familiar with ASMR uh, or their, the videos that people make of them, but they they can be pretty in like pretty in depth, pretty you know fleshed out. People make costumes, they do backgrounds, they do props, all that kind of stuff. I had an idea. What if I read these on camera as a character, not not necessarily a character from this series, uh, you know, not necessarily a character, not from the series, but someone. Uh, tangentially related to the series. You know, it's not someone from the main cast, not someone from, you know, the story itself, but someone who could be like a historian or uh, a storyteller telling this story or maybe like a news anchor or something like that telling these stories. I, I don't know exactly how I would want to do it. I've, I've got some like vague ideas of, of, you know, reading off of like a like a see-through tablet you know, with like glowing blue letters on it or something like that. I, I don't know exactly. I've, I've got like I said, I've got vague ideas. I'm not sure exactly what to do. Um, I I think I need like a little bit better camera than what I have right now. Right now, all I have is like a little webcam. It is in 1080, but it's not great, you know. Um, <clears throat> so I need to save up for that. But other than that, I think I think this would be a good idea. Like kind of like I could do like costumes and I could do like makeup and shit like that. And it could be like almost like I'm telling like the story from the perspective of someone like uh, that like lived afterwards or, you know, experienced it or, you know, was there, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly. I know I'm kind of rambling right now, but it's just the idea that I've sort of had. Uh, so sorry about that guys. I won't hold you any longer. Have a great one, one more time. And, uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.